Hi, this is teacher Hassan from SMBP Chalam Kwanza Tree School. Welcome to my science class. How are you today? I hope all of you are doing very well. So, today, first of all, I'm going to give you an update about our science lessons. So far, I have made videos about introduction to science lessons, that was lecture one, and then in lecture two, how to learn science, parts 2.1 to 2.7, around seven videos about scientific method steps, and also those lectures covered experimentation, data collection, and measurement of physical quantities, and also the report writing. So, today I am going to teach you about lecture three, science process skills. Now let's get started with the science process skills. Let me give you a definition first about the science process skills. So you see the skills that scientists and researchers use to help them in their work. So science process skills are those skills which help scientists and researchers use to help them in their work. Now, if you look at the diagram of science process skills, this, these skills are divided into two parts. One is basic science process skills, and the other one is integrated science process skills. So basic science process skills are for basic users, basic users, basic users like grades seven to nine, for example, M1, two, three and integrated science process process skills are for the higher tier students for example those who study at a university at university those who uh, do a bachelor's degree like uh, bachelor's bachelor's degree and then master's master's degree and PhD or something like that. So for the higher tier students, but not only that, you also can use some knowledge from the the integrated science process skills uh, with the basic science process skills, and those will be really really helpful for you to conduct your IS projects. Now. <clears throat> Let's have a look about the basic science process skills. Basic science process skills uh, are follows such as number one, observing, number two, measuring, number three, classifying, number four, recording data, number five, making number and space relations, and number six, communicating. So we will discuss all these points in details First of all, observing. What is observing? Identifying and naming the properties of an object using the five senses. So if you look at this definition, observation is one of the most important tools, one of the most important tools for a scientist. If you look at this picture, if you look at this picture, what can you see? What place is this? It's a super shop, right? It's a super store or a super shop, you can say. And then you see, who do you see? You see some people, right? One, two, three, four, five. You see five people and a cashier, six people. You see uh, Santa Claus, right? A fantasy character and then you must see some other things in the picture so let's get started with some questions the first question is what was the time what was the time so if you observe the pic picture carefully you will be able to answer all these questions what was the time you see the time how to find out the time you see there is a clock right and you see the time was 10 30 p.m and then what was the date what was the date if you look around the room uh, then you might see there is a tag for the date you see december 24th and then the next question is describe the person at the front of the queue so you see there is a queue it's a queue right 
it's a queue and over here you can see at the front there is a man a man and then in the middle you see a lady and you see just at the end you see a an old man an old man so describe the person at the front of the queue so this is the person at the front of the queue now the person is a guy number one is a guy number two wearing wearing a hat right wearing a hat number three so you see this is number two number three wearing a jacket number four wearing a pair of wearing a pair of boots right that is the way you can describe the person the person is a guy and he is wearing a hat a jacket and a pair of boots so this is the way you can observe the situations and you can describe so to make a good observation you need these five senses what are these seeing then tasting hearing feeling and smelling so if you look at this plant this is a plant inside a bottle right inside a bottle so based on your observation you can say that the plant is planted inside the bottle so to make an observation how many senses are there yes then you're right there are five senses number one touch number two sight three taste four smell and five hearing now I am going to talk about classifying or classification of things classification or classifying what is classifying classifying means sorting things into categories so we can make categories based on the different characteristics so to talk about the definition the ability to tell something about an object observed and also to categorize them right and also to categorize them categorize the things right categorize the things okay so look into the similarities or the differences of objects or organisms so if you look at this animal and if you look at this organism right it's a mushroom so you see it's a mushroom and it's a ladybird or you can say ladybug and you can differentiate them with color size and shape so let me check this out we can classify these two things based on these characteristics so the first of all you see color then you see size and then you see shape right if you think about object one object one that is a ladybird what is the color the color is red what is the size the small size right and what is the shape it's oval if you think about this uh, mushroom so what is the color the color is yellow what is the size it's small but it's kind of bigger than the object one right you see the bigger than the ladybug so you can say it's bigger than bigger than a number one object and then you see the shape what is the shape of the mushroom it's also oval so based on the color and based on the size you can classify whether uh, number one is a ladybird or a mushroom because ladybirds are always red with black spots right whereas you see mushrooms are white or yellow with brown spots and that's the way you can differentiate a ladybird from a mushroom and this is called a classification now you can see how to classify the things using the classifying knowledge right sorting things into categories you see fish birds reptiles mammals and amphibians right now if you would like to differentiate fish from the birds right how do you do that you see both fish and birds 
Uh, no, uh, fish are cold blooded and then birds are warm blooded. So it's a difference, but both of them, fish lay eggs and birds also lay eggs. So these are the similar, this is a similarity, but if you think about the uh, warm blooded or cold blooded, then that's the difference. And also you see fish have fins. Fish have fins, whereas birds don't have fins. Fish have scales, but uh, birds don't have scales. They have feathers and wings. So that's the way you can differentiate fish from birds right and then if you look at birds and reptiles so what are the difference between birds and reptiles you see birds are warm-blooded whereas reptiles are cold-blooded right that's the difference and then you see birds have feathers and wings feathers and wings whereas reptiles have scales but not far far means the body hair far means the body Hair. So reptiles don't have body hair. They have dry skin and then usually they lay eggs and sometimes leave young. So you see birds only lay eggs. That is the way you can differentiate birds from reptiles. Then if you look at reptiles to mammals, right? You see reptiles are cold blooded and mammals are warm blooded and they usually lay eggs sometimes leave young but mammals always give birth to leave young right and they don't lay eggs they have hair or fur on the other hand reptiles have scales but no fur that is the way you can differentiate reptiles from mammals now if you look at mammals and uh, amphibians right amphibians what it means amphi means both so they can leave leave both on land and water so amphibians can live in water and also on land that's why they are called they are called amphibians now if you think about their temperature then cold-blooded Animals, whereas mammals are warm-blooded animals. It's a difference. They lay eggs. Mammals give birth to the youngs, right? So that is the way. This is, these are the ways to classify the things or the objects or animals or anything in the world. So classification or classifying is a great science process skill. Now, if you think about predicting, number three, predicting to anticipate and event based on data observations and past experiences how to say that so it's kind of like foretelling so you can say something um, about the future so foretelling or forecasting that's called so if you look at this cloudy if you look at this cloudy weather so you see clouds you see clouds with thunders and lightnings right so what would happen so it will rain so based on this Evidence we can say based on the present evidence we can say it will it will rain and that is called a Prediction this is called a prediction. So what is prediction or predicting? You can say something about the future based on the evidence present evidence or data or the past experience Next you see there is a funny picture uh, it's about an Astro, astrologer, right? So who can uh, talk about the future? So they're kind of like foretellers. You can say foretellers or fortune tellers, whatever you say, fortune tellers. So I just put the fortune tellers, okay. I put this kind of picture to just make you understand like prediction is something like to talk about the future based on the present evidence, data or past experience, something like that. Number four, number four is making inferences. What is inference? Making early conclusion of an event. So you see, you can make early conclusion about events. So what is conclusion? The ending, right? So you haven't done any experiment, then how? How could you just conclude 
about an event it's impossible but if you have knowledge if you read lots of books then you might be able to make a draw a conclusion about that event so what is uh, in France a statement or an explanation of what one has observed their intelligent guesses so let us get to this page you see there is a plant planted in a bottle and based on this situation you can come up with two types of inferences the plant's leaves will turn yellow and eventually it will die and inference two the plant will grow healthy now what do you think which one is logical one or two what do you think if you plant a plant inside a bottle so there will be no oxygen right if you just um, uh, put that lid and then no oxygen then uh, no nutrients no nutrients so based on this experience based on our knowledge we can say the plants leaves will turn yellow and eventually it will die so you can make this kind of conclusion you can make this kind of conclusion before doing an experiment before doing an experiment through in francis right so your experience your knowledge says the plant's leaves will turn yellow and eventually it will die and then you can do and experiment and that experiment might show you the same results and that's the way you can make inferences so to make inferences you have to read textbooks and you have to have background knowledge so for that you have to read read and read next you see making hypothesis what is a hypothesis hypothesis is an educated guess educated guess to to do what to conduct an experiment to conduct an experiment so after you get some results from the experiments you can test your hypothesis right you can test your hypothesis so whether hypothesis are right or wrong whether hypothesis uh, support your results or your statement or not so what is that uh, temporary temporary means not permanent not permanent a temporary explanation for an observation that has to be tested okay so let us have an example you see a plant is planted in a bottle then inferences you come up with two types of inferences the plant's leaves will turn yellow and eventually it will die then the plant will grow healthy now based on this conclusions before your experiment right conclusion as before your experiment you can form hypothesis so hypothesis one is if plant is planted inside the bottle the plants leaves will turn yellow and will die eventually number two if plant is planted inside the bottle the plant will grow healthy and based on this hypothesis how can you check this out you can conduct an experiment on a plant in a bottle and then you can observe the results whether hypothesis one or two is correct right now if you just look at this example what can you see it's a cricket it's a cricket and then you see a thermometer thermometer okay so what is the thermometer it's an instrument right it's a research instrument and if you look at this arrow what it means it means it measures the heat or temperature right it measures the temperature now you can see a word chirp 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 so making sounds right so the sounds made by cricket so you see number one manipulated variable what is that temperature so if the temperature goes up what happens if the temperature goes down what happens responding variable crickets ch chirping frequently so when a cricket chirps 
frequently when the temperature goes up or goes down or something like that so we can check this out so you see temperature is a manipulated variable why is that because you can um, turn up the temperature and you can turn down the temperature so you can change this variable and th these are this is also called independent variable right and on the other hand you see you can check out what you can check out the crickets chirping so you would like to see the results of crickets chirping so this is this is called dependent dependent uh, variable dependent variable or you can say the responding variable and what is the hypothesis if the temperature increases if the temperature goes up crickets will chirp more frequently so you just come up with an educated guess like if the temperature goes up the crickets will chirp more frequently they make sounds more frequently and you can test this hypothesis through an experiment you can just um, uh, turn up the temperature and then you can see how the the crickets behave if you turn down the temperature and then you can look how the crickets behave do the chirp frequently in the in a high temperature or do they chirp frequently in a low temperature if the chirp frequently with a high temperature then your hypothesis is correct but if they don't do that on the other hand if the chirp frequently in a low temperature then your hypothesis will not be correct that's the way we can check out the hypothesis to check out a hypothesis what we need we need variables number one manipulated variable number two responding variable and we need research instruments right so in this test the research instrument was a thermometer experimenting what is experimenting or experimentation planning or carrying out an experiment to test a hypothesis and to report the results so it's a way to test a hypothesis right and then we will check this out in details right now measuring and using numbers why do we need that we need to make a quantitative observation using apparatus and units so you see there are some instruments like it's a triple beam balance then you see it's a ruler right and then you see it's a cylinder right all these are instruments these are instruments so why do we need this kind of instruments we need this kind of instruments to check out what the physical quantities physical quantities of our research subjects right research subjects or something like that so you can see through a triple beam balance we can check out the mass what is the mass mass is weight and length that is the long right and volume of liquids like liter and the milliliter something like that and you can see the standard units for mass are milligram gram and kilogram the standard units for length are millimeters centimeters and kilometers then volume of liquids the standard units for volume of liquids are milliliter and liter so this kind of measurement is very very important to conduct an experiment so if you look at this picture you can see nowadays we use a digital scale to measure mass we use a stopwatch to measure time we use a meter stick to measure length then also we use a cylinder to measure volume and then thermometer to measure temperature so if you look at this ex example what can you observe so you planted a plant in a bottle we know uh, without oxygen and without nutrients in the bottle the plants will die anyway we'd like to check out the height because we would like to check the growth right so from this experiment we would like to check the growth so we can check this growth how we can check this growth with a ruler right if the plant grows then we can see that uh, we can check the height with the ruler so that's the way we can measure the numbers or the quantities now controlling variables 
identifying the controlled, manipulated, and responding variables and using them in an experiment. So you see there are three types of variables. Number one, responding. Number two, constant. Number three, manipulated. So what is manipulated variable? It's independent. It's an independent variable or the variable we are going to test, right? Changes throughout the experiment. We can change independent variable. Then constant variable for the control group to compare, right? So that will be a comparison. Comparison between control group and the case group or experiment group. Responding variables, responding variables like the results, results of an experiment. And these are also called dependent variables. Dependent variables. Now, if you look at this example, you see, we would like to measure the growth. What would you like to measure? Growth of three, plants right and if you look at the sun right sun sun and sun what is this it's an instrument right you would like to check with the sunlight so instrument and then water water and then you see water what is the water water is also like a, it's a variable it's a variable. What kind of variable? We can change the variables. You see in example one, no water, right? And then in example two or plan two, you see 20 milliliters of water. And then in plan three, 40 milliliters of water. So based on this experiment, what can we conclude or what, how to form a hypothesis? This experiment would like to measure, would like to measure the growth with different amount of water, right? Amount of water supplied every day. So you can see here, we can change the amount of water. So water is a manipulated variable, right? Water is the manipulated variable. So that's the way you can see the amount of water that plant receives each day. That is the manipulated variable. Next, you see, based on that experiment, what would be the results? So your water was the manipulated, manipulated variable, right? And how to check the growth? So you can check the growth with height, right? That is, so height, height. So based on the height, you can see the results, like whether they grow okay or they don't grow or eventually they die, something like that. So height will be the responding, responding variable. So what is the instrument in this experiment? The instrument is a ruler, right? And then you also you see sunlight, 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 having the same amount of sunlight. So this is also an instrument having the same temperature, but having different amount of water. So now you understand how to identify a manipulated variable and how to identify the responding variable, right? So you see um, things that might affect how tall the plant grows could include, what is that? The amount of light, it is very important. For all of this, the amount of light it receives, then the temperature of the air, and also the kind of soil, right? And based on, so there, so here you see the three plants and they received almost the same amount of light, same temperature of the air and same kind of soil, but they had different water, amount, right? And that's, that's actually made a difference. Now, if you look at this example, you see what is the manipulated variable in this experiment on keeping water hot? So what do you see here? You see, okay, let me check this out. So first I will write down manipulated variable. 
then I can write the responding variable and I also can note down about the instruments, right? Instru, instrument, okay. What would, so what are the instruments we can see? Plastic cup of hot water. So you see plastic cup of hot water, number one, and then you see a styrofoam cup of hot water. So you see there are two cups, two cups, one is plastic and the other one is a styrofoam. So you can see two types of cups and then you have hot water. Inside you have what? Hot water, hot water, right? Hot water. Now what would you like to measure? You would like to you would like to measure the temperature. How do you do that? You can do that with a thermometer, right? You can do that with a thermometer. Now, if you look at these two types of cups, so these are, so cups will be the uh, manipulated variable. Why is that? Because in one experiment, you used plastic cup and the other one you used a styrofoam. So this is a manipulated variable. This is a manipulated variable. Now what you have, you have the hot water in both cups, right? Both cups, you have hot water. Now what, you would, what would you like to check? You would like to check how long the water is hot, right? Uh, which one uh, can keep the water hot for a long time? And how do you check that? You will check that heat with a thermometer. You'll check that the heat with thermometer. So a thermometer is an instrument. Cups will be the uh, manipulated variable and the temperature, right? Temperature or heat will be the responding variable. So heat is the responding variable, or you can say temperature is the responding variable. Now, what is the manipulated variable in this experiment? You see the cups, right? We have two types of cups. And then what might be the responding variable in this experiment? Obviously the temperature, right? So you would like to see the temperature because you can, you can measure the temperature with a thermometer. So the instrument is the thermometer. Next example, what would be the manipulated variable in this experiment on how much heat different soils absorb? Now, what could be the responding variable? So I can write down manipulated variable, then responding variable and instrument, right? Instrument. So what can you see? We see three types of soil, right? Three types of soils. What's that? clay, then potting soil, and then potting soil, and then sand. So these are my so soil types manipulated because I can change the variable. So soil type or soil, but I have three types of, right? One, uh, then two, and three. So uh, uh, these are the manipulator or changing variable. Now, what would be the instrument? Instrument you see? Thermometer, 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 right? So instrument is the thermometer and to check what? To check the heat absorbed. So heat, heat will be the responding variable. So from this experiment, you can say the manipulated variable, variables are types of soil such as clay, potting soil and sand. That's what you see here. And the instrument is a thermometer or thermometers and the responding variable is the heat or the temperature, right? Because you can measure that. Now, after conducting a research and having a conclusion, you have to communicate your results. You have to make it public so that people will know about your work, they will have a new knowledge. And how to do that? You can do that with graphs, charts, mind maps, or tables, right? And also, when you communicate your results, your, uh, your project with other people, you must keep in your mind that about these three things, 
Op option A, operational definitions. You must keep the definitions. Then using space-time relation, it's about the as the time passes, what would be the variable like or something like that. Then interpreting data. You must interpret data in a rational way. So you must compare the data. You must uh, show the data in a logical way. If you have the similar kinds of results, then uh, with other uh, with other projects, other works, you must uh, show them. So if you look at the operational definition, you can see animals, then a human uh, leg, then you see some flowers, pollen, then you see some seeds, right? And see, you see plants. So you can come up with different types of definition. Like what is an eagle? And uh, what, is a, what is a pollen? Then what is a seed or what is a plant? Something like that to let people know about your project. So you must come up with operational definitions. Using space-time relationship, you see size and shape of the ice cube changes as time passes. As you know, if you just keep an ice cube in a normal in normal temperature then what would happen the ice melts right but it takes time so as the time passes the size or shape of the ice cube changes then if you think of the height so if you just uh, observe the growth of a plant in different times for example uh, week one right week one after plantation then week two week two and maybe week three or something like that as the time passes you see the changes right and how do you see a change in in this plant that will be the height right that will be the height next you see interpreting data you can interpret a data through a diagram you can interpret data uh, through tables tables or charts you can interpret the data through graphs Right, we have different types of uh, tools to interpret the data. Now, who is a scientist? A scientist is a person who experiments in order to learn. So a scientist must follow the scientific method and also the science process skills to learn. Next, we see there are many types of scientists such as astronomer. An astronomer studies about what? Stars, planets and other objects in the universe. You can see a telescope and then you can see a planet, you see stars, right? And you see some astronomers. Then a biochemist studies chemical substances found in living organisms. You see DNA, you see a molecule, and then you see an atom, right? So a biochemist studies about all these things. A botanist studies plants. A chemist studies chemical substances such as plastics, metals, and food. You see, it's about a chemical reaction. So a chemist always works with chemical reactions. Then you see an ecotoxicologist. Wow, it's a big word. Now, let me split this word. Eco. Eco means environment. And then you see toxic. Toxic, toxic means poison. And then you have toxicology. Toxicology means the study, study of poison, right? Then you see toxicologist, toxicologist, a person or a scientist who studies about poison or the harmful metals or harmful uh, the, the pollution or something like that so you see an ecotoxicologist working on um, environment right and the harmful effects of different uh, uh, matters and you see the potential sources of emerging pollutants right you see plastics then pesticides herbicides then pharmaceutical uh, residues then you also see the cosmetics so all these things are responsible to pollute our environment and we an ecotoxicologist can give you a plan how to uh, how to just 
make the uh, environment pollution free. So uh, it's a huge work for an ecotoxicologist. Then you see a geologist. Geologist studies about earth, including rocks, soils, and how they form. So you can see our earth, right, is composed of crust, mantle, inner core, outer core, and then you see a rock, right, studies about rock, then you also can study about crystals, minerals, gems like precious metals, and then you see, you can study about how to extract oil. So we get oil, right, and a geologist can help us extract oil. So, and also you can see like mining or like gold mining, then you can see tin mining. We have different types of mining. So all these works are done by the geologists. Then you see a pharmacologist studies about medicines and drugs. You can see the drugs and medicines over here. Then you see a zoologist. A zoologist studies about animals. And you can see two zoologists working on animals. They are studying specimens over here. And then what is not science? Studies that are not based on the scientific method are called pseudoscience. What is pseudo? Pseudo means fake, fake science. So we can have like some fantasy movies, right? We can see some fantasy movies and uh, science sci-fi movies sometimes like those are uh, not kind of following the of scientific method, so those will be pseudoscience. So pseudoscience is often seen in advertising. You can see a witch, you can see a wizard, you can see fantasy movies, and then you see some commercial ads or something like that. So those are fake science. Can students be scientists? Yes, obviously, because today's students are tomorrow's Great scientists, right? Great scientists. The students will be scientists one day, obviously, for sure. And then, after finishing this lecture, I hope you will be able to understand how to observe things, how to measure things, how to classify things, how to record things, and how to make number and space relationship, and how to communicate your results, how to formulate hypothesis, right? How to construct an experiment, how to use the changing and controlling variable, then how to use the data and modeling. Modeling is kind of constructing a framework, framework, so a plan, plan of your experiment, right? How do you conduct your experiment or something like that? So this is the way you can conduct your IS project and also other science projects using the science process skills. Now, let's talk about our homework. I have given you about seven questions in your homework. So, and I uploaded this PowerPoint presentation. Uh, so you can download uh, the presentation along with this video from our school website. So let me discuss about the question one. Jim thinks that the more air pressure more air pressure in a basketball, the higher it will bounce to investigate this hypothesis. So it's a hypothesis. He collects several basketballs and an air pump with a pressure gauge. So what, how should Jim test this hypothesis, right? So let me check this out with uh, the variables, right? It's very important to come up with the variables. So the first one is more air pressure, then we have the higher the basketball, higher the basket ball bounces, right? Bounces. So we have two types of variables, more air pressure and the higher basketball bounces. Now, what do you think? Which one is a changing variable and which one is a, a resulting or a responding variable? And we have some instruments, right? If we 
just sort out the instrument. So what we need as an instrument, as an instrument, we need what we need. We need an air pump with a pressure gauge. So we need an air pump with a pressure gauge. And also what we need, we need basketballs, right? We need some basketballs. So instruments are this and you can check more air pressure. So what you have to do, you have to, for example, you have four basket balls, right? You have four basket balls. So you see this basketball has less air pressure. This has a little bit like a more air pressure this has a little bit more air pressure and this has the highest pressure or something like that so you see you can change this air pressure variable so it's obviously independent variable or a changing variable or manipulated variable right and if you think about the higher the basketball so you see just results right so higher the basketball uh, bounces you can see the end products or results so this is must be a dependent variable or you can say responding variable now how should jim test his hypothesis bounce basketballs with different amount of force from the same height it's not about the force it's about the air pressure so this is not correct bounce basketballs having different air pressure that's what we saw here so uh, from the same height so if you look at so this is the ground level and this is maybe the height so for example you see the ground and then this is the high maybe that 10 meters high right 10 meters high and then you can throw the balls down right throw the balls down and then you can see like it just uh, hits the ground and then bounce like just bounces this much it hits the ground then this this much then uh, you hits the ground and then it bounces this much and then it hits the ground and then maybe it uh, bounces this much so you see you have to throw the balls from the same height so bounces bounce basketballs having different air pressures from the same height so this is our correct answer bounce basketballs having the same air pressure at different angles from the floor different angles from the floor so we cannot measure the bouncing by throwing the balls from different angles from the floor it's impossible we need a high right we need a height then it's not correct bounce basketballs having the same amount of air pressure same amount of air pressure from different heights that also doesn't make sense so in this sense b is the correct answer i hope you understand about this example so that's the way you can solve question questions two to three four five six and seven I hope this will help you understand about the science process skills and thank you very much for your uh, valuable time. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me by email or line and I hope to see you again in lecture four. Until then, bye-bye.